Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and we are back to basics now people. After our most recent video in which we discussed the January transfer window and what we want to see happen to our football club and what is a massively important transfer window for everyone involved with this football club, it's time to get back to doing what me and the the best people discussing the upcoming Rangers game and the upcoming Rangers game upon the calendar this time has the added spice of being against Dundee United. So I don't think much needs to be said. Not much of an introduction is needed for this game. So let's go ahead and dive right into the old oppositional preview and talk about a Dundee United side who at my current time of recording are sitting in 11th. However, there is games going on right now. So they may, just may, be 12th by the time it's all said and done, which would be beautiful, people. Really beautiful. But I guess it hasn't been beautiful to Dundee United fans, people, because a season that started off with so much expectation, especially after the summer window they had, keeping a lot of their major or key players and adding some interesting and exciting pieces, the likes of Glenn Middleton and, of course, Levitt. The expectations went through the roof for Dundee United and all those expectations quickly turned so ugly that Cinderella's stepsisters would be jealous of it, people, because it's been nothing but... A shambles pretty much from the first whistle to where we stand right now. Because as we've already mentioned in today's video and sometimes during other videos, people, Dundee United have been rock bottom for the majority of the season. And again, they are well and truly in that relegation dogfight. But now it's time we actually discuss a Dundee United. Let's go a wee bit deeper. Because I know I could do the bare minimum for this video and just say, oh, they're terrible and move on and everything like that. But I didn't like taking anyone's time for granted to tunes in to these videos. So let's dive a wee bit deeper and figure out what is actually happening with Dundee United. How can our season that started off with so much expectation? There's a lot of people picking them, not only finishing top six, but to push up there and be battling for top four. How did that turn so ugly and I think we'll start with the, for me the biggest problem that they've got right now and that is putting the ball into the back of net because this is a side that might be near the bottom of the table and everything like that but it's not a side that's struggling to create chances or create opportunities or get the ball in the box to have a shot no this is a team that is averaging just over 10 shots a game people which again is solid but when you dive a wee bit deeper in to that they're averaging six shots a game inside the penalty box people but yet they are still struggling to score so badly that after 19 games in the SPFL they have muscled just 23 goals that right there Disney pick you up points and that right there is one of the reasons they're rock bottom or near rock bottom of this league. Genuinely, people, they couldn't score on a brothel for the majority of this season and it's cost them chance after chance and point after point. But it's no just their attacking struggles. For me, that's the biggest reason because, again, a goal scorer will win you 15, 20 points a season if you give them opportunities. But they're not much better back the way either. Something they were quite good at was defensively and keeping clean sheets grinding out results. Well, that seems to have absolutely evaporated for Dundee United this season as they are gifted oppositions at least 15 shots on their goal 15 a game they're just given to the opposition and when you look again a little bit further into that they have conceded a whopping 33 goals this season meaning when I'm currently sitting here and recording today's video they have a minus 10 goal difference which is incredible. People now, I know nine of that was against Celtic when they laid down that afternoon, but still, people, that Disney matter. That is a shambles. So they're struggling to go forward and put the ball in the back of net, and they can't stop teams from scoring it elsewhere. That isn't a perfect sandwich for a Dundee United fan, but I'll be honest with you. I'm quite peckish. But of course, it's not all doom and gloom just yet for Dundee United. It is worth noting that they have at least two games in hand over their nearest rivals that's battling and involved in this relegation scrap. So they're still within their hands to get them away from the bottom of the table. But they've really got to start turning it around and being a different side than they've been for the majority of the season. Or they well and truly could be championship bound. But it's not as if... They have sort of gave up in terms of this. They're trying everything. They can, people. This is a side that has played eight different formations in the league this season. Eight people. They've played eight different formations. They are trying and testing everything. But again, for me, it also shows a sign of a team that doesn't know what it's good at or know how to get the best 
out of its players. Now, they seemingly have found their way over the most recent couple of weeks as they've sort of fell in and started picking consec and consecutively, sorry, the 3 4 2 1 formation, which again helps facilitate the likes of the Mulgrews, but mostly at Edwards right now in that centre back spot in the middle to be able to pick off and start some counter attacks. And I'm fully expecting going into tomorrow's game versus Rangers, we will see a 3 at the back formation, but instead of a 3 4 2 1, which is an attacking formation getting people forward, I imagine a lot of that 4 that's in front of the three drops back to almost make a seven as every point is absolutely vital for this club right now and again because they are in that relegation dogfight they won't show or be embarrassed at all about how they set up and try to grind and try to win opportunities to get the ball into the box I'm talking about Tony Watcott doing more than my Wi-Fi connection I'm talking about them fighting and battling and trying every trick in the book to get set pieces people but again that is their prerogative given where they are in the season right now and it's on us to make sure they can get in for this game but that's the story of Dundee United so far this season it's not been pretty people but again I'm sure they'll find that extra 15-20% that's been not there for the majority of the season now Rangers has rolled into town. And with that being said, people, that means we can get away from Dundee United and talk about Rangers, which again puts smiles on my Nasher, and it's a part of the preview video that's actually, actually loaded with stuff to talk about. I'm talking about from unfortunate transfer, uh, uh, injury update, sorry, and fun transfer action so let's get ahead to it then shall we and I think we'll start off with the latter right there because again it feels sort of like perfect symmetry with our most recent video because Michael Beale came out and confirmed there will be no loans in January something a lot of us were worrying about going into this transfer window is it going to be another half measure is it going to be another easy route in terms of loans in January where Michael Beale's confirmed there will be no loans in January the players that are arriving this transfer window will be players that want to not only be here but want to be here long term so that there is very encouraging for me and again gets the anticipation up especially considering the fact he said that he spoke to a couple of players their deals and getting done and everything so I know we're all frustrated the fact that it's the 7th of January right now and we've not even had a sniff but we didn't really get much rumours these days people but people thinking oh they're just going to wait to transfer day on day apparently that's not the case as several players have been caught uh, Several players have been contacted, slash several deals are trying to be getting done. So, aye, fingers crossed we get some good news in the next couple of days, ladies and gentlemen, as the players start to rock and roll in. But I just thought I'd give you a wee bit of a transfer update from the, the man himself. There will be no loans in January, and deals are being worked on right freaking now. Moving away from the transfer news and getting back regarding the injury team news and everything, we of course found out some devastating injury news, people, and this one is a real killer and I think it could affect our season as we found out that Tom Lawrence, who again was supposed to be only injured for three weeks, four months ago, is now having to go and see a specialist, people, to figure out what is actually going on. Now, again, there is no timeline given about when he'll be back. Michael Beale's always honest with us in press conferences. He'll tell us when they actually find out the information from the specialist but considering the fact we found out that he is going to see one it doesn't fill me with confidence that we'll see him any time soon which is a real blow because he has genuine talent people and he is a game changer if you will but if he is out long term again for me it's another massive kick up the jacksie to the board to plunge some money into this middle of the park and get us stronger in that position because we can't always be kicking the can down the road waiting for folk to come back off the injury list or anything like that. We need players right now so I hope Hopefully Tom Lawrence is back soon and we get to see him before the end of the season. But again, it's not looking too good. But as soon as we get another update, I'll let you know down here. But again, where well, that's a blow. Thankfully, there isn't any other ones as there's been no fresh injuries regarding from the Celtic game to this one, which might be, yeah, well, that's usually what happens in football. It's not what's been happening here, people, right? That there's a godsend, just getting from one game to another. There's been no fresh injuries. In fact, we also got a boost regarding two of our players as well as both John Souter and Mr. Hadji is back involved in training. How beautiful is that to say, people? Now, again, they're not going to be involved in this game. Beal's targeting the game at the end of the month versus St. Johnson as the game to try and get them back involved. And that's the target. That's the timeline for us. And again, I just love the fact we're now getting told about these timelines, told about these things. It's just so refreshing to have that honesty. So we found out from both that they will be back, not only involved in training this week, but we know the timeline for them to be back in and around 
our starting 11 slash 18. Welcome back, boys. Good luck with the rest of the week. We hopefully see you Dane Hings at the end of the month. And if I'm honest with you people, that's sort of it for the Rangers team news and the Rangers conversation and of course the oppositional preview. I'm expecting a turgent game to actually watch but I just have so much more confidence and so much belief now in this Rangers side than I did maybe a month or two ago when I was going into these games saying this is a real banana skin. Yes, it's tough on paper but I do feel like our attacking style now will get a couple of goals especially with how Dundee United have just been gifting opportunities away. Hopefully we receive them and actually take the opportunities when they come, especially now considering the fact that Antonio Cholak is back fit and available for selection. I'm praying we see him start, especially with the, the rumblings and the, the news from Michael Beale that Morelos is carrying a slight injury. Is it time for Tony Goals to be involved once again? Here's hoping there's another dirty double on the old list. But aye, that's all I really got to say about the game. People, I'm expecting some goals in this game. And I'm expecting Rangers, despite it being away at Tanadice, to come away with the scoring of Rangers 3. Dundee United nil with the partnership of both Goldson and Davies continuing to shine because every single time I see them, I'm encouraged even more. So it'd be nice to get another clean sheet. But in saying that, it is away to Tanadice, so it's probably going to be a nippy bum time one nil -er, isn't it? Probably, but that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video to get involved and let me know your thoughts and opinions and, of course, your predictions down there in the comment section below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been TJ Rover92. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow after the game. All the best and bye-bye.